Hello and welcome to Straight to Coding. Today we are going to talk about response caching in ASP.NET. Okay? Now we know that response we, we know that caching helps improve the performance of an application. And this particular and in this particular instance the response caching helps a lot with response times of the web API requests, okay? Um I've got here a typical ASP.NET web application here. And I've deleted the default web um, weathercast f uh, controller, and I've added a, a data controller. Just that just literally returns the second of the current time. Okay. So if you call that from Postman, you can see that the data gets changed every time you call it from 51 to 53 to 54 or 5, whatever. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to cache the data that gets returned from this endpoint okay now there's already a built-in service in the net core web API okay so all we have to do is make use of it so we do that by calling the builder the services and then we say add response caching okay now we are now going to make the um, use of the response caching so what we're going to do is the second step is say now use response caching Okay, the third thing or the final thing that we need to do is now configure the caching. Okay, so we do that by making use of this um, the use extension. Okay, so we just say sync async, and what we do is we expect the context to be passed to this, and then we have the next middleware to call. Okay, so we are going to configure that let's quickly put the next call to the middleware and now we have we are free to add the context We're going to make configurations to it okay so response dot get typed header and then what we're going to now do is now going to configure the caching cache control equals new cache control header so we, we're going to set the maximum age uh, of this of the caching. What we are going to do is we're just going to say just for 10 seconds, okay? We are caching it for just 10 seconds. And we also need to set the public equals true. So we will expect the cache control header to be sent from the front end, okay? So we are done. All we have to do is just do three steps. One is add the caching service use it and then configure it so we are done and from here we now have the cache control headers sent we're going to send it to the back end okay with the um, a value of public so if you call it we get 15 and 15 will stay 15 for the next 10 seconds okay and after 10 seconds it will change to the latest data okay now it's changed to after 10 seconds it's changed to 26 okay so it will keep being stayed at 26 for another 10 seconds before the, it gets a new latest response data okay this is really good for storing settings or configurations of the application that doesn't need to be reloaded every time okay now <coughs> one thing you need to keep in mind is if you set the authorization header on the request then you have literally disabled the caching control okay it doesn't work with the authorization header so if I was to make a request again it would gi always give me the latest data okay so keep that in mind when you are setting up your caching control on the on the back end okay if I remove this and now the data is cached okay keep that in mind and keep also the steps also in mind the first step is to bring in the service okay step one bring in the service step two make use of the service and step three which is now configure the service okay step three configure the service now <coughs> there's also a few options that you can do on the service okay this is an overload of the service so it gives you the option to set if you need to use the case sensitivity of the path 
you can also set the maximum size limit for the response cache okay and you c default is always set to 100 MB you can also set the maximum body size okay the largest cacheable size for the response body size in byte and it's also set to 64 MB okay thank you very much and don't forget to subscribe to this channel